Are you ready for me, David? Good evening, Ventura. Welcome to the forum presentation of the candidates for District 7. I'm David Marin, a member of the League of Women Voters. We're delighted to bring this third forum to you tonight for the District 7 candidates. There are four candidates in total. Heather Ellinger is with us, Nancy Peterson, Joe Schroeder and Michael Nolan have not yet arrived. As soon as they do, we'll just incorporate them into the process so that we can look like true experts on Zoom. We'll see how that goes. We're all learning about this new process of doing online forums. With that, it's my pleasure to first introduce the president of the League of Women Voters of Ventura County, Betsy Patterson. <clears throat> uh, good evening. I am Betsy Patterson, the current president of the League of Women Voters of Ventura County. 100 years ago, the 19th Amendment uh, was ratified, giving women across the nation the right to vote. We hold the right to vote precious since not all people were given that right in the original Constitution. And for 100 years, the League of Women Voters has been dedicated to encouraging civic engagement and informing voters about candidates and the issues. From its beginning and continuing today, the League is a nonpartisan political organization. We do not support or oppose any candidate or political party. Each of us has a voice in our government if we use our vote. To be informed voters, we must ask questions of the candidates and understand the pros and cons of each ballot proposition before we cast our vote. Thank you for joining us tonight. We hope you have many of your questions answered by the candidates. Thank you, Betsy. At this time, we're going to begin our opening statements. We randomly assign the numbers and we're gonna begin with Nancy Peterson. One and a half minutes, Nancy, when you're ready. Great, thank you. Good evening and thank you all for your time and the opportunity to participate this evening. For those of you who are watching and don't know me, I encourage you to visit my website at petersonforventura.com and the Voters Edge website, there's a lot of useful and extensive background information in both locations. In short, I'm a California native and a 10 year resident of Ventura. I hold a bachelor of science degree and a JD and have 40 years of business and legal experience, including serving as vice president of operations of Bon Appetit Magazine in my early career, before it was sold to Condé Nast Publications and in-house counsel for the parent company of Gulf States Toyota, the five state distributor for Toyotas in Texas. I'm a licensed attorney, both in Texas and California. When moving to Ventura in 2010, I had the opportunity to pursue a lifelong dream and open a bakery. I did that on Main Street Ventura and still hold a cottage food license. I additionally, I served the community on the board of the Visitor Center and Best Day Foundation for eight years. In this short 10 years, I've come to know so many in the community, including the small business owners who, like me, are pouring their heart and soul into their dreams here in Ventura. While I will have many priorities on council, often conflicting while I serve, providing a framework for a vibrant Ventura will be high on my list, as I believe that will support so many dreamers building their futures here. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And... Our next candidate is Heather. Uh, please, when you're ready, Heather, a minute and a half. Hi, good evening. My name is Heather May Ellinger, and I'm a 25 year resident of the city of Ventura. I have the privilege of raising my children here. And I was recently a property inspector for the last 10 years and just recently became a real estate agent. And I appreciate the opportunity to be considered for a district seven candidate on the Ventura city council. And as your next city council member, I plan to focus on bringing thriving business to our city. Our residents need more local work opportunities and securing these businesses here will increase revenue for our critical infrastructure needs, such as improved roads and critical water pump mechanisms, especially in our foothill areas, and of course, supporting our local services. I will focus on critical quality of life issues, such as finally, and effectively addressing the homeless issue. COVID-19 restrictions have devastated many of our local businesses, and this terrible crisis has not only greatly jeopardized our local businesses survival, but also caused many of us to lose jobs or have our work opportunities greatly curtailed. We must advocate on behalf of our residents to the county and state to quickly and safely reopen businesses for full service. 
our local economy should quickly return to the thriving status it had prior to the shutdown. We should once again enjoy our beautiful city and all the wonderful aspects of living here in Ventura. There is a balance between protecting public health and protecting people's livelihoods and well-being. Okay. Thank you, Heather. I'm going to have to stop you there. Okay. Before we go on, I'm going to allow the viewers to take a look at the district map for Ventura. The light purple color is District 7, so this is along the Pierpont area, the marina, and some of the parts of Ventura over here near Market Street, et cetera. So if you live in that area, you will be voting for one of the four candidates running. But even if you don't live in this area, it's important to know each of the candidates and because they all will represent the entire city. So with that, let's move on to our first question. And Heather, you'll be up first. The question, Heather, let's get right to one of the ones that's on many people's mind. It's the housing issue. Where are we going to house everybody in Ventura? There's growth that's coming. There's a lot of things that are talked about, including infill, density, sprawl. Please share with us your positions on improving housing, creating more housing. Yeah, so we're actually right now, we have a lot of projects that haven't even broken ground. And um, I think we need to get back to what we are, which is a suburban community. We have several hundred houses up in the Ventura um, hills that burnt down and they have not been rebuilt. And I think we should really focus on getting those 300 plus houses back up and built and, and not be worried too much about bringing additional condos and apartments and doing the collective living because if, as we've seen with COVID-19, one of the biggest factors in the spread of that virus was in close proximity. So communities like ours where we have a suburban outlay, a lot of people didn't get sick. We, we really don't have an issue in the city of Ventura or even in the county. So I think that we need to really rethink this whole process of bringing everybody together, this walking concept. I mean, we're, we're a car community. We need to be focusing on our roads and, and making sure that the people that live here are taken care of before we start bringing in additional housing. Again, we already have a lot of projects in the works. And as you see on in downtown Ventura, I'm off the avenue, we just put up a really nice um, affordable housing community. And um, we have a lot of them already in place. So in my opinion, uh, we need to just keep focused on those houses. Thank you. And welcome to Joe Schroeder. I'll introduce you in just a moment, Joe, after we hear from Nancy Peterson. The question again, Nancy, is your position, what would you advocate to handle the housing situation, increase housing in the community? What are your positions? So I think um, the council coming in and that we have the opportunity to participate in the general plan. And one of the things I've talked about in, in many of my conversations, endorsement interviews and, and different um, uh, conversations I've had with people in the community is that we start to look proactively at what the requirements are in front of us, um, what our restraints are, um, what our opportunities are, and we look proactively at how to address that. The general plan gives us a wonderful opportunity to do it. Um, I mean, it's very clear that Ventura is bounded by the hillsides and the ocean, and we have SOAR. Um, we have to look at creative opportunities for infill and uh, development for all levels of housing, um, but we can do that in a way where we target certain areas and we find creative solutions as opposed to reacting um, to the needs and to the demands. And so I think as part of our general plan, as part of our efforts over the next year, we need to start looking at, at our opportunities, the mall, the uh, Thompson corridor, perhaps the Johnson corridor, um, an area and look at where we can provide the housing that's needed at all levels in our community. Thank you. Well, we'll welcome Joe Schroeder to the program, his candidate as well for District 7. Thank you for joining us, Joe. The question, hey, uh, you have a minute and a half. If you are in, are, are you in gallery view so that you can see the timer and the other candidates? I am not, but I've, uh, I I'm okay with that. Well, if we have a timer on the screen. You should be able to see it. If you're able to go to gallery view, you have a minute and a half 
And um, with that, the question is the same to you. This is our first question of the evening. What is your, what will be your policies to increase housing in Ventura? Okay, I, um, you really have to take a look at infill. There's a limited amount of land that we have. Uh, we have to leverage everything that we have right now. We have to be creative. And I think we do have to offer both affordable housing and the whole spectrum of housing. Um, so not everybody's going to like it. Um, affordable housing, uh, everyone says they're for it, but nobody wants it in their backyard. But we have to go through the general plan and develop some targets. I believe from the state, the city of Ventura has a 12% growth pattern over the next eight years, which is about a percent and a half on a household basis. So our general plan needs to work within that and we have to develop some strategies to um, hit those targets. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, Nancy, we're gonna start with you on this next question. So tell us a little bit about your, what you think are the most important issues facing Ventura and how will you try to work and solve those problems? We've already talked about housing, but this gives you a little more time or you can talk about other issues instead. But what are some of the critical issues and how would you work to solve them? Um, I obviously, and in most communities, I think there are a number of issues that we're faced with. Um, I think that um, my priorities as we go into the next four years will be to um, work um, collaboratively on the general plan so that we have a big picture view of where we want to take Ventura and where we want it to be in the next 20 years. Um, I think we also have to work on a strong economic development plan with our city management and our city staff um, and find ways to grow revenue and uh, help our local business community, but also invite additional business to the community that can bring jobs and, um, and fill up some of the housing that we're going to need to provide. Um, in order to attract those businesses, we have to address the housing issue. Um, finally, I think we need to create a shared culture, um, a, sh a culture of shared partnership with both our businesses and our residents, um, improving our communication, um, improving our outreach, um, and making our residents and our businesses feel like we're in partnership with them. I think those will, setting the stage in that way will be the underpinnings to addressing all of the other issues that we're going to have to face, whether it's homelessness, our water issues, housing, um, um, all of those issues that uh, go hand in hand. Thank you. Joe, same question to you. What do you see as the most pressing issues and what will be your solutions? Yeah, I, I think the, the most pressing issue we have in front of us is we've got an $11 million shortfall in revenue due to the impact of COVID. Um, I would love to say that um, that's gonna go away in six months. I, I, I think it's gonna be with us for a year or two. And that's really going to limit new programs, dramatic growth, um, additions to staff. Uh, so we're really going to have to bear down and I think look for some more revenue and then get businesses growing as quickly as possible so that we can get out of the impact of COVID-19. In addition to that, I think public safety always has to be an issue. I, I think the police do a marvelous job here. And I think the culture in the police department is absolutely fantastic. Finally, on growth, on, on businesses, we have to take care of the businesses that are here first and then build a climate to grow for new businesses. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, you have 20 seconds left on that one. So if you can't see the timer, you might be cheating yourself out of some opportunity. No, I'm okay. I'm good. Thank okay. you. Okay. Just want to make sure everything's fair. Heather, let's hear your thoughts about what you think are the most critical issues and what your solutions will be. Right. So for starters, the, to me, the most critical issue facing the city of Ventura is the homeless crisis. And when police and fire are saying that 60% of their calls are directly related to the vagrant population, that is a significant issue that we need to address. And it, just in your everyday life, we're interacting with them. We have a lot of crime in our city. We're actually um, out of the county. We have the highest crime rate. So to me, these are the most important, most impactful issues to deal with. And that is top priority for me. And there's 
plenty of creative ways for us to get involved with the community and have a community partnership in, in tackling these problems. The other thing um, that I think we really need to take advantage of to take care of is our, our road conditions. We have really serious issues on our roads and we really need to start addressing them in a much quicker fashion than we're doing. We've got two years out before we take care of Bristol Road and that's one of the most damaged roads in the entire city. So I think that those are the most critical issues that we need to take care of. And then of course, everything we've done with this COVID-19, we, we have incredibly impacted our economy as a result of the response to this virus. We need to get businesses back open and running and we need to help these businesses survive because a lot of them are, are, are dying right now as we speak. So. Thank you. Joe, we're gonna start with you on the next question. And if you were elected, how would you view your role on the city council in regards to some of the issues that are politically sensitive, such as gun control, police reform, racial justice, uh, the Father Sarah statue, some of these things that are not budget related necessarily or transportation, but they're more social issues. What would be your approach to dealing with these? So I think it, it should start with, um, from a, a starting point of respect that we're not gonna all uh, agree. There's gonna be some disagreement, but just because people disagree doesn't mean you have to be disagreeable. I think if we extend everybody common courtesy and respect, everybody gets to give their viewpoint and in the end you take a vote and you move on. Um, and there's passion involved in social justice issues, Black Lives Matter, Father Sarah, there's not going to be easy solutions. We're going to have to compromise, listen to each other, and be respectful. I think building the team at the city council is going to mean a lot for city staff and all of the citizens of our wonderful city. Thanks. Thank you. And Heather, we'll go to you next. Uh, what do you see as the, what would be your approach to dealing with these politically sensitive and uh, important social issues? So I really don't think it's the place of the city to be determining social justice issues. I, um, I personally am very disappointed in the resolution that our city recently passed. It's one of the reasons I am running. I don't think it's our place. And I think that the city made a, a grave decision in removing the statue that's been there since 1935. Uh, I think that um, it's important to hear what people have to say and be considerate of it but that's not that's not city council's role and i think our, our city council right now is very misguided in the decisions that they're making thank you nancy we'll go to you next i'm not sure where the hum is coming from but uh, nancy same question to you what would be your approach to deal with some of these social issues these uh, highly charged issues that are, affect both the community and the state and the country um, I, I agree with Joe that um, respect is critical and how we um, have open and, um, and good conversation and inviting conversation. Um, there's, I, I have 40 years of business experience where I've had to work collaboratively with teams to um, address often uh, cultural and social issues within workplaces. Um, I think similar approaches on council um, hearing from the community, improving um, communications with our community and building that partnership um, with our business constituents and our residents where they feel like we can have dialogue and build that respect um, will go a long way when those issues do arise. Um, and also a willingness, creating a culture of a willingness to um, come to the table. I mean, I spent uh, time last week talking with uh, People on both sides of the issues will probably get to it on short-term vacation rentals. And, and basically, um, I, I was a, a, a common person in the middle and brought two sides of those, two, two different um, uh, parties to the table. And there was a very good dialogue. And as long as people are willing not to just focus on the extremes, but, but to have the dialogue and the conversation, I think we can come to reasonable solutions. Okay, thank you. I'm not quite sure how you knew what the next question was going to be, but certainly in District 7, the issue of short-term rentals is very pronounced. 
there's been many issues over the years as far as number of people renting, uh, trash from renters, but also the need of homeowners to supplement their income. A lot of uh, important issues there. So tell us as far as dealing with the short-term vacation rentals, what would be your recommendation for moving forward? Do you accept the status quo with the latest ordinance or would you advocate for changes? Am I up again, David? Yes, Nancy, you're first. Yeah, um, you know, it's funny because um, I saw you smile when I brought it up, so I knew it was coming. Um, and, and we, of course, had to anticipate that. When, when I'm just gonna tell a little side story, um, but when we did our interviews, if we did our interviews with the safety um, for their endorsements, um, one of the questions that was posed to me, they said, you must hear a lot in your district about response times and the poor response times for fire calls. And I said, you know, I know we have poor response times, but um, um, I don't hear a lot about that. I hear a lot about short-term vacation rentals. And ever since I um, have, have decided to run, I've had people on all sides of the issue talking to me about it. I suspect the other candidates have as well. Um, I generally am not opposed to short-term vacation rentals. Uh, having served on the visitor center, I know they add to the vitality of our tourism market. I'm not in favor of over-tourism, but I also believe that having all of the different things to offer the folks coming here adds value and they bring dollars to our community. I am in favor of a well-written ordinance and a um, well-written plan. We've had an ordinance to, since 2009, which is great. Oxnard is just um, do, uh, creating one, but ours is, has a lot of ambigu ambigu ambiguity, um, ambiguity. And we also need to really, really work on enforcement. We don't do a very good job in that department. So I think working on um, a clearer ordinance and better enforcement is what we need to do at this stage. Thank you. Heather, we'll go to you next. Please share with us your position on short-term vacation rentals. And we'll ask you, thank you. So I actually am in support of the rentals. I personally, when I travel, I prefer that route as opposed to going to a hotel. Um, and I think we do have an ordinance. So if there are individual properties that are causing problems, then I think that we need to address them directly. But I don't think you get rid of everything entirely for a handful of problems. I think you address the issues. Everything has a balance. We do have an ordinance already. So if there's a specific property that's causing problems repeatedly, then yeah, we address them. But in general, I'm completely in favor of them. Thank you. And Joe, let's hear your thoughts, we'll ask you to unmute, and then uh, we can uh, go ahead and hear your thoughts about short-term vacation rentals. Um, um, I think that there's a compromise here. Um, I've probably had the same conversation with probably the same people who either see me first or see me right after they talk to Nancy. And, and I think we can reach something. There, is a, there are some guardrails. One of the guardrails is the Coastal Commission. The Coastal Commission is going to make the final call on this. They've approved an updated version um, in Carpinteria, and they gave significant feedback to Oxnard. So I think there is a way to manage that and to set some limits. Because um, nobody, um, like I get Airbnb, but nobody wants to live on a lane in the Pierpont area with, uh, I think one, one lane has nine short-term rentals on it. And I think that's, too much, and I think most people would agree with that. But I, I think we can update our, our, our policy that we have with the city, make sure that it's aligned with the Coastal Commission, and, and figure out a, a compromise. Thank you. And Joe, we're gonna stay with you and go on for the next question. So there is a proposal for a housing development I believe it's called the Goodman Thill Housing Development to be located on the corner of Goodman and Thill. I'm saying all that right. So Joe, what is your position on this proposed development? So a couple of weeks ago, the city had, um, the city planning had a, a meeting on that and um, I learned a ton at that meeting. So first of all, that uh, development is 100% affordable housing. And because it's 100% affordable housing, the authority level that the city has on that development is pretty close to zero. The state takes an and has an active management to incentivize cities. So they're planning on going up right now four stories high. 
I, I would prefer something lower than that. And I think even a bigger problem is that they want 105 parking spaces and they're planning on 111 units. Um, I, I don't think that anybody's, that works for anybody's math, but the city is gonna be limited in what authority they have. What is encouraging is the city is meeting with the developer and at this point the developer is willing to meet with the community and get their feedback. Um, so I, I think we're limited on what we can do because the state, um, I think it's Senate Bill 35 that, that covers that, but um, we're gonna be limited in how much impact we have. Thank you. Heather, let's hear your positions on this uh, development that's proposed. Yeah, so this is um, something that's been important and, and this is something a lot of people are talking about and they are extremely upset. It is really ill, Ill um, thought out to have it in the middle of this community. It's a very tight area. It's gonna bring a lot of traffic into the area. And um, personally, I don't think that they should be building it up as much as they are. I think it needs to be brought back to the drawing board and I think it needs to be a lot smaller than it is right now if they're gonna do it. And I don't think we should put up with the state forcing their mandates on us. I think we, we as a community are losing a lot of our rights and we need to start fighting back. And, and this is one of those situations where we should. Thank you. And Nancy, we'll wrap up with you on this question. What is your view on the Goodman Phil development? Um, so with the opportunity to speak with the community, I think that that and get input. I mean, I, I received a call last Sunday night from someone who lives in that area and, and got some insight um, into just, and, and, and Joe's shaking his head, so I'm wondering if you got the same call as well. Um, but I know that there are a lot of concerns in the neighborhood with, um, especially with the height and the size and the impact of the number of units. Um, with the opportunity to have um, community input, I think what the city can do in helping that process is make sure that they're very clear and communicate upfront as to what the um, what the potential outcomes are and what the community can have input on, so that, that we manage expectations, and and also um, and where we do have latitude, really work with the citizens and the residents in that area to address some of their concerns. I mean, some are you know, I mean, I we just discussed a four story. Um, there's a concern that that kind of looms over the neighborhood. Um, you know, if there's some latitude there, how, how can we address that and still meet the requirements that are put on us by the state? But to look at those alternatives, but realistically and communicate clearly what our options are. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. Heather, you're going to be first on this. And so Heather, the are three districts that are up for election this cycle. That means the residents of four districts in Ventura have no vote in this election. Do you think that the mayor of Ventura should be actually elected by the people or should that continue to rotate among the council? And what is your, what will be your policies to still listen and work with people who are outside your district? What do you think can be done to still represent the whole city, even though you're elected by just one district? Well, I mean, first of all, this is our inaugural election as districts. So it's new to everybody. I've always liked the idea of the populace voting for the mayor and not just a small group of people deciding amongst themselves who will be representing the city. Um, so I'm in favor of, of everybody voting for the, the mayor. And in terms of representing the city, of course, I think you get on the council and yes, you want to bring your concerns into, you know, from your area into the meetings, but you also want to look at the city as a whole. And that's how I look at it. I look at it holistically anyway. I'm not just representing District 7, I'm representing all of Ventura. Okay, and would you like to add anything about electing a mayor from the entire city? Well, that's what I start. I started with that. Yeah, okay. I, I do. I do think it's important. I personally would prefer that we vote as a city on who our mayor is. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Wonderful for that. And uh, next up then is uh, Nancy. Uh, please share with us your views about how to work in the district sit in a district situation, but yet still have a citywide view and work with the people throughout the community. 
and your position on electing a mayor? So to address the first part, David, I mean, I, I think as district representatives, I like that structure because I think we bring a voice for our district to the table. Um, but we bring it to the table and we work for the benefit of the whole community. So I, I value these opportunities to speak to the different community groups and let them get to know me as well and, and to hear from them throughout the endorsement process that a number of us went through with different agencies in town. Um, we got to hear their concerns. I always closed with, you know, whether you endorse me or not, thank you for your time. I look forward to working with you because we all have to work together. But my district um, residents know and my district, district business, businesses know they have a point of contact and someone that can be their voice on council. Um, with regards to mayor, I, I think we are in a, an opportunity, we have an opportunity to educate um, our city on our structure and, and our structure has been this way for a long time. Right now our council is really set up to um, oversee, to set priority and oversee city staff and city uh, management. Um, the mayor, as we've seen Matt LeVere over the last four years, spends about 40 hours a week of his time and most people look to him, not our city manager. Um, as the voice of our community. Um, with that, I, I think that reevaluating the structure and how we elect that person um, is warranted. So I would agree we should be looking at that. Thank you. Joe, we'll wrap up this question with you. Your position and your thoughts about uh, handling districts, very specific to your local constituents, but also still having a citywide view and your thoughts on the mayor. Yeah, I think. Uh... But I like the district, uh, the change in that we, we have seven districts. It, it's just easier to represent about 15,000 people than it is 105,000 people. I think it gives us an opportunity to get closer to the businesses in the residents. Um, and as, but at the same time, you can't be so narrow that you only listen to district seven. You still have to represent the entire city. And if you're going to build a team, you can't just go in there thinking, I'm only going to vote for what's really good for my district. At the end of the day, you have to vote what's best for the city. From a standpoint of voting for mayor, um, I would prefer that uh, the city council pick their mayor. And I kind of look at it as an athletic team. Um, I don't think you let everybody who goes to a Dodger game select who's going to be the captain of the Dodgers. I think the people on the team, which is the seven people on city council need to select who they need to have as their leader. And they should be able to figure that out based on their own personalities and leadership styles. The, and I think the closer you are to that, the more able you are to pick the right leader or the right mayor. Thank you. Joe, we'll yep. start, start with you on the next question. As far as seniors, I think there's some questions here regarding uh, providing more support services? Are we doing enough for seniors, activities, types of housing? So can you share if you have any particular policies you're going to advocate for regarding seniors? Um, I think we, and I guess I'm a senior now since I'm 66, so I guess we, uh, I'm talking about myself, but um, our population is going to be aging and more and more people are going to be in that senior group. I think we have to be really careful and there's different segments in that group and they need different kind of help. Some of them are gonna need um, financial literacy. Some of them are gonna need food help. When I was on the board at Food Share, the fastest growing group of people that we were giving food to were people over 60 years old. And that really scared me. So I do think we have some good leadership in that area. Suze Montgomery is in, in AAA. Um, the area agency, um, and they do some really good work. And I think we've got to allocate resources to help the seniors get through what's going to be some tough times for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Heather, let's hear your policies and to or what policies will you have to support seniors and promote opportunities for them? Yeah, so um, it is it's definitely an issue. And um, it goes back to um, what we have going on in the city as a whole. We need to have the funding to be able to do the things that we're talking about. We need to help the people that are needing us the most. And that is one of those populations that could end up homeless on the streets 
And um, so I fully support any programs that are going to help that community. Thank you. And Nancy, we'll wrap up with you. What policies will you promote to support seniors? Um, David, I'll be honest, I don't have any specific policies um, for the senior population. I agree with Joe that we have some agencies um, um, that work with the seniors that do some amazing support for them. Um, I think as a council, um, we have to look at all segments of our community. So why we wouldn't, of course, leave the senior population out and look at their needs and what the priorities are there. And then weigh those against the other priorities and other segments in the community and you know, meet, the, meet the needs that we can with the resources that we have. Um, but I don't think we would omit the seniors nor um, um, uh, just focus solely on them, but look at them as a segment needing special services and identify what those services are, where they're lacking and what we can do to support them. Thank you. Nancy, we'll begin the next question with you and this gets into just your overall philosophy about how you provide a balanced approach. In any city, and certainly in Ventura, there are competing interests. There's those that might prefer focusing on business growth, others that are concerned about the natural environment, others focused on social equity, and of course, everyone tries to incorporate all of these. But what would you bring to the table as far as a balanced approach to look at uh, business economy and employment, also the environment and social equity? Um, thank you, David. Um, I think what I would bring to the, well, I know what I would bring to the table is I, I'm a balanced person to begin with. I don't have a, a extreme focus in any of those areas, but I also recognize that the three areas that you discussed really all together, working together, add to the quality of life in Ventura. And so as we work on our general plan, as we lead the city, I think we need to always be looking at the impact of one decision in one area on the other areas and make sure that, that we're working so that we're optimizing each of the areas that we, with the resources that we have, with the decisions that we make. I've spent years in business trying to do that in business environments where you have to, you have limited resources, you have to figure out how to grow the business or move something along and how you balance that. And, and working with the team on council, working with the input from the community, um, I believe we can do that. I don't, as I started with, I don't have any specific focus, but I recognize we need to work, um, to, to work in all three of those areas to bring balance to the community. Okay, thank you. Heather, same question to you. What type of uh, approach would you bring to balance these sometimes competing interests such as the economic side and employment, along with the environment, social equity? Yeah, so I think balance is key. I think that our, as this, our main goal as the city is to provide fire and police. We are supposed to be providing appropriate roads and walkways. We need to focus on first, the main tenets of what a city is supposed to be taking care of for their citizens. And then everything else is lovely add-ons. And I think that we, as long as our budget provides for it, great, we can add those other things. But first and foremost, we need to be providing the um, services that our city deserves. Okay. Thank you. Joe, same question about balancing yeah. employment. Um, I, think, I think of two words that begin with A, and it's, it's align and allocate. So uh, whatever we do, we have to align with the coastal plan, which we haven't created yet, which is a subset of the general plan. And in those plans, it is going to align where we're going to throw our resources at and, and sometimes where we're not going to throw uh, resources at. And, and the allocation is going to be extremely difficult. Um, again, the, the financial budget over the next couple of years is there's going to be a hole in the budget next year as well is the estimate that I understand. So these decisions are going to be really difficult. And if there's one thing most Venturians agree on, we have to protect the coastline um, and we have to protect our beaches and the ocean and the two rivers north and south of us. So uh, it's a balancing act and it's going to be compromised and it's going to be um, leadership that's going to get us there. 
Thank you. We're going to start with our next question, candidates. As far as looking at the economy, uh, certainly many businesses have closed, many are struggling due to COVID. But once this is over, how will you, what policies will you promote to help local businesses recover? And also, what kind of policies will you have to try and attract new businesses with high paying jobs? Heather, you're up first. So this all really revolves around the community development department. And if we wanna support current businesses and keep them from going under, a lot of them already have. There's no coming back for a lot of people already. We're really deep into this. Um, but when it comes to the community development department, we have to really work on streamlining the processes to get business up and running in the first place. And if we want to bring in business that's going to bring jobs that are worth our citizens' time and that's going to help them have a job that they can afford to actually live here, then it really it just all comes down to the community development department and what they're gonna do to help businesses. I can tell you story after story of business owners and building owners, commercial building owners that had wanted to bring in a new business and because of the lengthy process with the community development department, they lost those opportunities. So if we want to stop losing them and we want to bring people in, it starts right there. And that's what I would be focusing on. Thank you. And we'll go to Nancy next. Same question to you, Nancy, about uh, helping businesses recover and how to attract new businesses with high paying jobs. Um, thank you, David. Um, Generally speaking, and, and where I started earlier in the um, presentation, I, I believe we need a strong economic development policy that not only looks at our uh, small businesses, but also attracting new ones. And the attraction of the new businesses, um, how we handle our housing, um, how we handle our city planning will go to that because um, as I know from working with a startup in downtown Ventura, attracting businesses and then attracting candidates to work here, um, the housing issues created problems um, as a business for us to attract talent. And businesses aren't going to relocate here or, or um, build their business here if they can't um, house their staff and um, attract the talent that they need. Um, with regards to our current business community, I think streamlining the processes with City Hall um, building the culture of a shared uh, partnership with our business community, um, addressing their needs in that way so that um, things are not difficult for them to do business here, but, but we um, find ways to ease the strain of doing business, especially following COVID. I think we've done a great job with that, with our downtown moves program for that section um, of our community. I think that provided a lifeline um, for a number of businesses. I think we need to find more creative solutions like that to help our small business community. Thank you. And we'll wrap up with you, Joe, on the same question about what you can do to help businesses recover after the COVID um, pandemic and also what policies you would promote to bring new businesses to Ventura with high paying jobs. Yeah, I, I would start with the businesses that are already here um, and make sure that we make it as easy as possible. So that's gonna be uh, new procedures, slimmer regulations. Uh, I think we need to be innovative and creative. I think Nancy's right that the downtown, what we did for the restaurants and the bars is, is helpful. I think we gotta look for some of those solutions as well. So we've got a short term and a long term answer to this. I would love to be able to get some of the financial institutions together um, and take a look at uh, what kind of lifelines they're giving some of the small businesses um, instead of just cutting them off as soon as they're 90 days late. Um, at a, another credit you and I was at in San Diego when we went through the last downward recession on home prices, we sat down with everybody and pretty much gave them three to six months of no, no mortgage payments. And of all the members that we did that to, only one person um, ever was a charge off. So I think the same thing with commercial lending too. I think we need to work with the financial institutions and, and, and incentivize them and push them as hard as we can uh, to help small businesses. Okay, thank you. Nancy, we'll start this uh, last question actually with you. And it's one that's been asked a lot in all of our forums. It's about 
your policies and your thoughts regarding defunding the police, providing protection of the community, and even uh, your views as far as Black Lives Matter and social inequality. So share with us your high level, your, your views about some of those issues. Thank you, David. Um, I, I believe that safety in our community is, is of utmost concern. And, and I mean, when we think in the business world of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we, um, you know, the, the base level safety and, and uh, of our community is, is key. Um, I'm pleased that um, I've learned a lot about what our community is doing through the endorsement processes with our first responders. I have received the endorsements from both fire and police, and I'm honored to receive those. Um, and I look forward to working with those organizations when I'm on council. Um, I watch city halls, our city council meetings last evening where um, Chief Schindler uh, presented his new strategic plan where he addressed many of the social concerns that have been raised. And I listened to two hours of conversation um, while council members questioned him about the plan and some of their concerns. Um, I think that dialogue and that conversation is what we need to continue. I think 2020 has raised, um, opened the door to the dialogue and as leaders in this community, as leaders across our nation, um, we need to rise to the challenge and continue the conversation and not be afraid to recognize we all have biases, we all have prejudices, um, many of them are unintentional, um, but when they're raised and brought out that we can have um, respectful conversation around them and work towards solutions together. Thank you. And Joe, we'll like to hear your thoughts, uh, your views about defunding the police, providing protection of the community, and also looking at issues like Black Lives Matter, social inequality, systemic racism. In 90 seconds. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Um, I, I, I dislike um, the defund police as a characterization of really what needs to happen. Um, so if I can put that aside and then talk about, I'm, I think it's a great conversation to have is to say, what's the best way to allocate our resources in the police department? Um, and you... <laughs> It's a moving target. And so there's, uh, there's great things that I think the city has done, the police department. In my opinion, I've witnessed them de-escalate situations down in, in Main Street and, um, and in District 7 on multiple occasions. I, I, I like the performance of the Ventura um, Police Department. I think that leadership starts at the top and that strategic plan that they showed last night, and they were talking about their mission and their values. I think we've got a good leader in there, and I think you can tell where he wants to go, and the police team underneath him, they buy into his, his vision, and I think that that's absolutely important. Thanks. Thank you. And Heather, please share with us your views about defunding the police protecting the community, looking at issues like Black Lives Matter and social inequality? So I think that the Black Lives Matter movement and the concept of defunding the police are very misguided ideas. I think that we have a significant problem with crime in the city of Ventura. We are the number one crime area in the county. So the idea of defunding police is baffling to me, and I do not support that in any way, shape, or form. I do think that anybody that feels marginalized or put down upon, I think that you won the lottery if you live in the United States of America, so that in spite of any type of racism you may feel is coming your way, in spite of anything that you may feel is putting you down, because you live in the United States of America, you can be do and have anything you set your mind to. So I'm sorry to hear that people feel that they're still in this day and age, especially in the city of Ventura, that you feel that way. And I collectively hope you feel the hug of the entire country because we all love and support you. And congratulations again, because you're an American citizen and you can be whoever you want to be. And I wish you all the best and I think you should go for it. Take all that energy that you're spending burning down buildings and go make yourself whatever you chose to be when you were a little kid. 
go and, and make that happen. You can and you should. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to all candidates for your uh, answers to all of the questions. We are now at the point where we're going to begin closing statements. Um, we will be going in the reverse order. Joe, you're actually first on the closing statement. Uh, you'll have a minute and a half, followed by Heather and then Nancy. When we finish the closing statements, we have a short presentation from the league. So Joe, when you're ready, one and a half minutes. Thanks. Experienced leadership with financial credibility is a winning combination for Ventura City Council. I've grown a $1 billion organization during two recessions, so I'm familiar with the difficulties of economic times. I'm not all numbers and figures. My greatest satisfaction may have come from the work I did on the board of directors of FoodShare, our regional food bank. Nine years ago, FoodShare delivered 7 million pounds of food to those that were going hungry. Today, under the leadership of Monica White, FoodShare will distribute 18, 18 million pounds of food. As the CEO of Ventura County Credit Union, I started a program that all employees would get 40 hours of paid time off to help any nonprofit in Ventura County. Together, we can do well and we can do good. I've earned the endorsement of over, I've, I've earned over 20 endorsements, including Congresswoman Julia Brownlee, State Assembly members Monique Lamone and Jackie Irwin. Finally, we must pay attention to our invaluable shoreline by building a strong coastal plan that fits into our future and the future of the next generation. Thank you. Thank you. Our next candidate is Heather May Ellinger. Thank you. I'm asking for your vote for the District 7 City Council and I am running for you and all Venturans who choose to make their home here in this last of the great communities, California beach communities. Our lives here in Ventura are so blessed by the great beauty of our shorelines, our hillsides, our rivers, our valleys, and most of all, our people. I am acutely aware of the many challenges before us. Ventura needs improved roads, critical water infrastructure, and the continued support of fire and police services. To assure these needs are met, we must attract, retain, and foster thriving local businesses to generate the necessary funds to meet Ventura's operational needs. Thriving businesses offer greater local opportunities for all residents. Additionally, we must finally address the real human issues that are the homeless crisis. These are the responsibilities of the city council, which in my mind have not been effectively addressed. I will efficiently work to get positive results on the issues and all local concerns that affect our daily lives. And I would be honored to have your vote for the city council in district seven. Thank you. Thank you. Our next candidate is Nancy Peterson. Thank you, David. Um, just in closing, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting, David, for your thoughtful and efficient uh, moderation of the event, and the other candidates in all three forums, which I was able to watch this evening um, and tune into. Um, I'm really honored to be running um, with so many people who are committed to doing something for our community. I think overall we have 11 candidates. Um, it's a big commitment. Um, the, those on this forum know how much time and effort we're putting in. And um, I just, I, I have respect for everyone who serves and everyone who, who would like to serve. I think it's fitting on National Voter Registration Day to remind everyone to register to vote if you haven't or if you're uncertain whether you have or you haven't, um, and to vote in this um, election year 2020. Um, and so as you vote, um, I encourage you to look not only at the capability um, of the candidates, but also their capacity to do the job and their heart for the job. I believe I have proven capability and capacity and a very large heart for the community of Ventura. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to participate in this election 2020 process and will be honored to serve the city of Ventura. Thank you. Thank you. And at this time, go ahead and show a short presentation. So we have an election coming up and this is unique. I don't think you could see anything right now. So let me try that again. Here we go. So this election, the League of Women Voters would like to remind you about the changes. Ballots will be mailed to everyone who is registered voter. You can 
vote by mail or you can still go to a voting center. But mail, if you're mailing your ballots, you have three different ways to return those ballots through the US Postal Service. You can drop them off at a convenient ballot box. There are some indoors and outdoors throughout the county. You can also visit a polling booth, a polling, I'm sorry, a voting center that uh, will be set up around the county. One difference between other years when you can go to your local polling location is now you can go to any one of the voting centers anywhere in the county and give them your name and address and they will print off a ballot that fits your area. So that's an option as well. So you can uh, visit the county to learn more about where the ballot uh, or the local ballot boxes are some important dates we'd like to share with you is that the mail-in ballots will be starting to go out October 2nd. You'll get them mostly over the next week. If it has not arrived by October 16th, we encourage you to call the elections division so that they can get one to you. The last day to register is October 19th, and we encourage everyone to make sure that if you are mailing in a ballot that you try to mail it by October 20th and make sure that it's signed. We suggest October 20th, because that ensures that the Postal Service will be able to get it and send it in to the Elections Department on time. Uh, as far as this election, it's unique in that there is a question about all the number of ballots that will be going through the Postal Service. So the state of California has extended the timeline for when ballots can be counted. All ballots voted in public in a polling center or uh, by mail must be voted by November 3rd. But if they come in late due to the Postal Service, they can still be counted up until November 20th. So keep that in mind on election night. We may not get results or we may see results flip-flop for a few days until all of the ballots are counted. And we'd like to let you know that the Secretary of State offers a website called wheresmyballot.sos.ca.gov where you can track your actual ballot. Every ballot has a unique ID and you can find out, has it been collected by the Postal Service? Is it already at the registrar's office for counting? A very useful resource for everyone is votersedge.org CA. You can visit that to find out everything about the candidates who are running in your particular district and city and state. You can also find out important information about the ballot propositions. We encourage everyone to vote. We encourage you to make sure you sign any ballots that you mail in. And with that, I'd like to just go back and take one final moment to thank our candidates, to thank our volunteers, Elizabeth, Maddie, Pat Essek, and Betsy Patterson, our president. Thank you to everyone. And please, if you want to see this video, you can go to the lwvventuracounty.org website, click on candidate forums. The videos will be posted within the next day or two. And uh, there's other forums if you wish to watch those. More are coming. Please keep checking back. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to our candidates. And good night to all. Thank you.